hey guys welcome back this is my city montego bay like i said i've been doing a series of vlogs on montego bay and this is rosa to be exact and today i'll be talking about the great houses in montego bay of course the most popular one that we all know is rosa great house but i'll be covering all the other great houses that are here in montego bay as well don't forget to hit that subscription button guys and now let's get into this vlog all right guys so like i said i'm gonna be doing a series of videos on montego bay and there was this competition on instagram that i saw and i entered and basically the competition is one where you showcase jamaica through your eyes and you know they you have to submit some pictures they pick 14 finalists so each person is assigned a parish uh, they, they gave me St. James. I'm going to use this opportunity as well to go around St. James and get some footage. Right now, I'm on my way. Oh, and they give you a car. They give you one of their cars to drive around and get the pictures. And you have to do it within 24 hours. I It was ATL that's doing it. So, I'm on my way to Island Roots right here in St. James to pick up my car. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> right, so... <laughs> My sister is dropping me off to pick up my car and I have some of my <laughs> some of my good friends are gonna come up and down the place with me like they always do so we can get some footage and get some cameras get some cameras get some photos <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna see the sea. Alright, come with you. I don't know which camera. Come from up here, alright. This is West Wales, Wallipa Tourism up here. You know, we see the island with the car here. I drive around the place. Yeah, I'm gonna think I want them to make it, but they look nice, you know, look a mini school for them. They're cute. And well established, nice and everything. Let's go inside. Morning. Yeah, and they are clean. That's nice. So, I made this for the day. Alright. Too bad. Talk to me nice. And I'm not much of a key if I've never driven one but you know, ATL that them have, so ready. So this is this is what's your name? This is Richardo from Enterprise. Not Carter guys, Charter. Get it right. <laughs> Alright, so it's gonna give me a run through the vehicle. Alright, so your vehicle comes fully equipped with a spear. A spear, alright. Respective tools and everything. Mm -hmm. We do a quick walk around. Normally we call it a chunk to chunk. Um, when renting from Enterprise, we definitely do not charge for everything. Mm -hmm. We have what we call um, a damage evaluator. Sorry, mine got damaged, but it's the size of a golf ball. Anything smaller than the size of a golf ball, we don't charge fortunate for you your rental comes with full protection so there's no liability to you no liability hear that guys we like that all right there are a couple of things that are on the unit mm -hmm. um they have been pre-checked already scratches such as this your contract has already been knocked off all right okay. and right one for hard scratches unfortunately but that does not end of the unit from driving and performing up to standard so those are being pre-checked. What is not pre-checked, I'll mark on your contract manually. If something does occur on your trip, what that means is when you return tomorrow, you'll spend an additional 10 minutes to tell us what occurred. Yeah. I will tell you to have You guys a nice have a day. tracker or have a dash cam? No dash cam, unfortunately. But you have a tracker? Yeah, the units are definitely tracked. Oh, okay. All right. And this is All right, so yeah. this copy, uh, is yours all right people for the car in the glove compartment you get it on full you return it on full all right now we are the jamaican um, road code so be safe on the road and thanks again for choosing enterprise my name is richard all right richard thank you all right Jamaica. well time for me to pick up my combo log them and go pro la la Woo! so first stop after one of the many stops we're going to a great house i feel like people always mix up um, Annie Palmer and Rosa, which were two different persons, 
and you know everybody kind of know the story but I'm going to tell you guys the real story so we're on our way to Rosal Great House and I'm going to be doing all the other Great House in Montego Bay so Roamton, Mount Pelier um, there's one up by Greenwood too uh, to be honest I don't really know much facts about that one so I'm actually looking forward to go to that one and I'm gonna see if I can find any remnants of the Kensington estate which is unlikely because they burnt it down so guys I'm gonna be talking about the great houses in St. James in this vlog first up is Rosewood you see at this stoplight right here there's numerous accidents that happen out here right here in Montego Bay and a lot of people think it's because Annie Palmer ghost is still lingering and all of that but in all honesty people just don't obey the traffic lights now today I'm gonna tell you guys the story of Annie Palmer as well as Rosa so you guys can know the difference between the both of them right so there was Rosa and then there was Annie Palmer right now this property sits on 6,000 acres of land and as you can see from this drone shot guys be sure to follow look more travels that it's a big 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 property like you can see the driveway it's a long long driveway just to go all the way up to the great house which is right there now like I said I'm meeting up with my friends right park ATL care and everything and I met up with my friends now the story how the story go there was rosa rosa was the first mistress of the house rosa got married and when she got married to her hus first husband fenning he had a dream of building a grand house right so he set out he bought the property right here in st james look at this view guys oh my god and he started to build the house however six months in he died but you know good girl rosa that now stop us i guess what she does she remarried after she remarried the second husband brought the vision to life so the vision that the first husband have mr fenning the second husband his name was george ash he brought that vision to life now unfortunately they don't allow for you to do recordings there so the rest of the clips are just pictures put together so you guys can have an idea of how inside is anyways let me say rosa's second husband did but that not stop rosa because rosa is a good girl so rosa remarry again she remarried for the third time she never liked that husband but you know that not last no time either that lasted four years and then she got married for the fourth time she was 45 this time and when she got married for the fourth time she truly loved that man and they had beautiful years together and then you know this time he died first this is a picture of rosa right this is rosa when rosa died you know everything was left to her husband and then the husband he died afterwards and he had two sons but none of the sons wanted it and then he gave it all to his grandnephew and his grandnephew came and claimed all of it 20 years later now when my man come in and jamaica and see all of this because i england him i come from and i said wow my man said well we did a nice pretty thing by my side so that's where annie came into the picture he got married to annie annie was an orphan and he married annie when she was 17 years old because she was an orphan it was said that she was raised by a lady who practiced voodoo now this right here is a picture of annie that's annie in the red and they say that this uh, the tour guide told us that the lady in the red that's annie and the the children around her was painted around her because Annie didn't have any children. Anyhow, how the story got is that Annie did have multiple lovers and she did get one of the slave lovers to kill her husband. And even after that, she remarried twice, right? And she had multiple slave lovers. This is Annie's bedroom. This is where it all supposedly happened, right? This is one faint chair. Miss Sue, tell her about the chair, right? Stay with me. Now, if I never in the bedroom, right? That's everything happened she had a dungeon right and it's understanding that the slaves would come up through the dungeon and she sneak them in and whatever and she do all what she want to do so at the dungeon this anyway she had with one lover his name was taku taku did really love annie but then annie did have her eyes set on this guy where they come from england but that guy apparently loved another female slave so guess what annie do annie killed the slave there right she never busy she killed the slave there and then Afterwards, him get just one bar killing after killing. That's all I mean. No, everybody end up a kill each other, whatever. They said that Annie got strangled in 1830, is what they say. And her remains is on the property. Now, 
right stay with me that's what they say and this is Annie's tombstone like I said she had to cool the practice all of her voodoo and some people come and they say that her spirit wasn't in it oh sort of go wrong come on I don't know one last look at Annie surrounded by kids that she didn't have right all right i've been showing you guys a lot of pictures some stuff that i want to talk about so this is annie's bedroom right and that chair in the corner was a faint chair so apparently anytime annie wanted attention she would act like she's fainting and the chair was there so she could fall on it right so it was a faint chair that was always positioned right there that would catch her every time because you know back in the day they used to wear those corsets so they would faint all the time so she would fake faint whenever she wants attention and everybody would just run come up there to her so that was her fainting chair this now was her toilet this is what the toilets looked like back in the day and when she done handle her business right and he pulled the rope here and somebody would have come come change the thing can you imagine that piece of slackness and she even bathed with hot water this was what they use to heat up the water because you know she can't bathe in a cold water this mirror it is believed that people took many pictures in the mirror and they saw a ghost and they believed that ghost was annie took a picture in the mirror i never see annie but anyways this was a bucket that they would carry water in and guys it's so heavy like the bucket is so heavy and this is what they used to store water in so they could wash their hands before they had dinner right so they said that somebody strangled annie and that annie died in 1830 no, it was two years after this that they had the massive Christmas Day Rebellion where they burnt a lot of the great houses. However, this great house wasn't burnt and it said it wasn't burnt because the slaves were afraid of Annie's spirit. So nobody went over there. But on the flip side, right, they also said that Annie left the estate in 1830, but she moved and she lived in somewhere in Anchovy in 1846. And that was the year that she died so again you know a lot of folklore i don't know how much is fiction how much is true but yeah now while we we're in the dungeon we we're looking at a lot of different pictures and one that stood out to me was this one it was titled slaves in a bar now you see two person on what looks like a pool table in my head i'm just like was pool table around back then i don't know the accuracy of this picture but they have it as these were the slaves in the bar somebody came and drew it i'm really on the fence about it but anyways that's all i have to say about rosa great house these are some more pictures that we took and honestly you might have said but wait why am i that climb up on the people that more like this and i take picture but i feel like I really also a place supposed to belong to. That's how I feel about the situation. Me and my dogs them on the end. You see, we come back from a place because Annie and all of them did mistreat with ancestors. So, I just there and claim my mind. You see, I sit down on the, on, the, on the steps. You see, I sit down on the porch. You don't know. So, when you sit down on something like this, I hear own it. Yeah, but you see, as much as I come back for you, I don't really want to live here because, you know, them say, my spirit not take, my spirit not take Annie. So, I'm going to leave the same way. Nah, stay, but when I'm ready, I'll go and come. Yeah, my mommy said that. A cool place. So, me and my friend, they marry me. I'm a combo log them. Yeah, I'm already we're, we're proud of that. Open at that. Well guys that's it on Rosa Great House. This is the sea that the dungeon takes you out to. Remember I told you guys that there was a dungeon so they had a little escape route for in case the slaves did anything. So that was an escape route would bring you down to the sea. And since I'm done talking about that I'm going to go head up to Greenwood and talk about Greenwood Great House. This is it right here. We have parking. That's a big parking lot. And I don't think a lot of people know about this great um this great house up in Greenwood, which is on the border of St. James and Trelawney. But this was so cool like, upon entering it. They had the rope to pull to get to the doorbell. And then when you pull it, it's an actual church bell. I go super loud as well. Anyways, after ringing the doorbell, you're greeted by someone and they bring you around. The tour is 20 US or 2,800 Jamaica. That's the price for locals. It doesn't get any cheaper. I thought it was a little bit pricey. But this is the property right here. And this is the actual great house. Now, this great house belongs to the Barrett and they owned over 8,400 acres of land. And remember back in the days, you know, guys, that um, St. James included 
Trelawney and Hanover so St. James was pretty big so they actually had the largest estate in St. James right this is their crest right here oh if you look closely on that crescent you see that there's a water pump which is ironic remember i said in 1831 they were burning a lot of the plantation so these these plantation owners they were prepared they had water hoses which were made from leather and a different um tongue right there to, to store the water and they had the water pump right at the front of the house so if anybody came and attempted to burn down the house they would be prepared just like that now the barrett's they had over 2,000 slaves and this one of this great house along with rosa great house is still standing now this great house it said wasn't burnt during the rebellion because these owners were good to the slaves at least that's what they're telling us while rosa great house wasn't burned during the christmas day rebellion because people were afraid of annie's spirit so these are the only two great houses that are still quote unquote standing in Mobe, right and this is a picture of one of the barrets um it was painted and it's an original piece now unlike rosa great house this great house really shows you how the slave masters quote unquote how they lived right because a lot of the original pieces are still there it's like an antique museum this great house as opposed to the other great house now rosa great house which is really and truly like more of a little story you know because it's all about rosa and her four husbands and all of them died and it's about how Annie mistreated the slaves but you know everybody loves a good story now there's some cool antique or vintage pieces around the this great house that i'm gonna show you guys so this one right here was a photograph and the reason why this photograph is over here is that they said that the woman at the back who was apparently a house slave actually died two years prior to this photograph being taken and they said initially it was a they thought it was a double barrel photograph or something like that but they checked it out and they said no that's a ghost now it's so funny that this house slave showed up in this picture because remember i told you that at rosa great house the house slave that was there attempted to kill annie by poisoning her but it never worked out and in the end they killed her and then they beheaded her and they had hung her head on a stake at the front of the plantation as a means of a warning to be like listen don't mess with me so like annie and it was very cruel right but yeah this was one of the many photographs that i thought was cool some other cool finds that was at this great house this little box right here is what they kept tea in tea was a hot commodity back in the day lol pun intended and they had to keep it on the lock and key i'm just so amazed by that that big box is just for that and this is a marble for original jamaican marble i don't think i've ever seen that anywhere else all in florida even just polish it really 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 good it's shining you know again they had a lot of paintings of all of the different barrets um on the property yeah in here was the dining room i believe um now with all of these great houses there's no kitchen inside they're outside and you know i'm gonna touch on that and tell you why shortly and this right here is a fireball what they used to use to ward off the mosquitoes and keep the foot warm so they had one right in the uh, dining room which i mean makes sense you know you want to be comfortable eating now the room so this was one of the rooms that they had again a lot of it was victorian furniture um the rugs were probably silk or from persia or something like that now the, the owners the current owners of the estate they live in these rooms which is, is kind of creepy but you know to each his own some other cool finds this is a silk press which i guess is kind of just like an iron board or an iron that they use to iron their clothes so this is what they used to use back in the day i thought that was a cool find and even back in a way we had a clock in for work so this is what a punch clock looked like back then you would boy i'm not even know but i was a punch clock and i'm just like wow that's crazy that's crazy they also had a love seat so apparently this is a love seat for when you're courting someone anybody that you like or anything but you guys couldn't sit and face each other 
and some of the love seats would curve again so a third person could be there and that third person would have been a chaperone what listen these things i don't know but they're just so cool this is a telescope um this is a, the pink room i mean for obvious reasons and they had a little crib now whether this crib was back from the 19th century or from way back when i'm not even sure she never really mentioned much about the crib but i thought this room was pretty cute now if you realize all of the rooms have at least two queen size beddy nights in it so it seems as if though everybody was in one room so like the parents the the daughter the baby everybody and this room was the blue room and again they have two beds one in each corner so unlike the rose or great house where everybody had their own space like one bed per room like this how um great house had two beds per room or at least three you know and everybody had easy access to this balcony that had the best view that i've ever seen now you could do a full 180 and see the entire horizon right so you can see it. if you look far out into the water you just look way way out you can see the edge of falmouth right all the way out there so and you know you just go right across the entire horizon a full 180 the full curvature and i mean you know all of these people when they're building their great house they built on a hill for an amazing view and i think this one this one is the best view i've seen thus far right now some of the furniture you now back in the day everybody had them secret love and them mistress and whatever so they had the secret compartments in all of the little furniture where they would hide letters and hide all sorts of manner things where they want to hide so a lot of the furniture that they always showed us had a lot of secret compartments um this was a uh, barber's chair and apparently back in the day the barber's office as well as the doctor's office would be in the same place so they would use the same chair so that was the doctor's chair as well as the barber's chair another piece of furniture with some secret compartment and my thing is this yeah right the letter be like yo all right so another third row the second row with the second the fourth box at the back because i mean let's be honest how do you even know which one of these compartments to look in for the letter right because even the secret compartment had a secret compartment but i guess that's what it was back in the day i mean not much has changed to be very honest everybody had them secret love and them mistress and all of them looking of our side chick that's what we call it now these days now this piece of furniture was a chair that fold over into a step so you could reach like the top books the top shelf for the books and this bookshelf was um came off of a ship and in different parts of this bookshelf they used to store and hide liquor so again more secret compartments they also had a lot of ancient maps so this was an old map of england like the cartographer back in the day was very very good because this is another one of africa which is very accurate when you look at it in fine details right and this was a picture at richmond hill which is right in uh, montego bay across from Mobe high and these are some old carriages that they have i mean like it would have been dope but to me at least if they would have like fixed up some of these carriages and probably offer people like a tour around the property in these carriages you know kind of more historic and you know the vintage feel but and I, I don't know look how small these seats are like i'm i don't even know how they held in them because remember they used to wear the corsets and those big iron stuff so i don't even know how they would travel in them and then this one was a bit different i'm not sure if the seat was supposed to go down but then it had the glass the glass case at the back i don't know what they would bring in that but yeah i thought that was cool as well some other cool stuff around the house that they found i think this was what they called a chaplain or something like that that the mistress would walk around the house with on their waist so this would have a scissors on it a timble you know something to keep needles and thread and also a little packet to keep notes so they can easily write stuff on it and then something there so I mean, imagine I walk around the house with this. Everybody I know say yeah, come because it's gonna make beer nice and them look ways there. Some other cool finds. This was a plug, like this is a wooden plug. Like I don't even know how these stuff worked back in the day, but that's that's pretty dope if you ask me. And these were horns that they used when they went pig hunting. I really know how that would work, but yeah. And these are headlamps. I think these were like the lamps for like train 
or to help the ship that was coming in i don't know and you know grandfather clock which still works and it was like an original from way back when it tells the date the time and it gives the the second hand as well so it's a very tall grandfather clock these are the oars um that they used to have for their boats when they're ready and they go out and this is a meat hanging table right and they would put the meat on now outside is where the kitchen is and oh and this was the bathtub for the baby i would assume so clearly they had children around because they had the crib and now this is the baby bathtub but that was a meat hanging table and like i said we're outside so that's where the restaurant is and it would bring you down to the kitchen which is outside and the reason for that is because the slaves were the ones that prepared the food that's the kitchen right there and you know that saying whistle while you work they have that saying that goes whistle while you work so that the slaves wouldn't eat any other food so like they, they would hear you whistling as long as you go along the corridor to ensure that none of the food is in your mouth like i said the kitchen led right around to the restaurant right here and they have like a lot of old pots and pans um from back in that time they even had this right here i wasn't even sure if it was light or if there was actually a fire in it or whatever but i don't know they had a brick oven as well and you could see the chimney up top um so like i said this is a restaurant now but i i don't know if they've just made it into a restaurant or what but yeah the brick oven that was there i don't think they use it and they had a table and that was a spit bowl i don't really know why we had a spit bowl on the table back then but this is the bar which they still use to function out they had drinks and so forth i had a drink there after the tour and everything now some stuff that they have hanging in this in this restaurant you know it's just oh my god i couldn't believe so they have a whip right this is a whip that they would use i don't even know if it was on the horses or on the slaves but i'm gonna think it was on the slaves and this was a big diagram with all of the different slave names they even named one of them trouble this was a human slave trap yes it looks like a bear trap but this was what they used to use to catch the slate the runaway slaves and it's just so wicked i just think it's so cruel and they had all of these other little machetes and other little instruments. They had an ankle shackle that they would use, um, like a tongue presser thing for the runaway slaves. You know, and the, the branding iron that they would use to mark the slaves so everybody know whose slave was whose and whatever. It was just cruel, man. Honestly, it's just cruel. Like, slavery was just one of the cruelest things ever. And they had this right here. So, this is what you could use to get um, bear. And again, to prevent the slaves from stealing any of it, when you pull, it makes that noise. So it's like a bell pull. So each time you would go to use it and you pull on it, it makes a noise. So nobody could really get away with stealing any other bear or anything like that. Um, some other cool vintage stuff around the property. This was a flyer for a runaway slave. And if you pause it and read it, it says, Mary go, she ran away from Ligani. And she is no big wit child and anybody who sees her will be awarded. I mean, I don't know how well somebody who's pregnant can be hiding or running away back in those days. But then again, they used to wear a lot of clothes. So it is possible. They also wanted a Negro copper. So these were like, and this is dated December 23rd, 1779. So you guys know this is, this is dated a long time ago. Other stuff included a sundial. This is actually the first time I've ever seen one in real life. They had these bottles which were from all over. Some were from a company right here in Jamaica, in Kingston, Jamaica. Some was from Liverpool and Belfast, wherever that is. And this was a soda bottle and it's, or sorry, a torpedo bottle, I should say. And it was shaped like that so that the, so that the soda could touch the cork so it could be easy to come out. They had a lot of musical instruments, a lot of polyphones were around the house. Um, this one works, but she says when it starts, it doesn't start playing. So she showed us this one, which is a standing polyphone. And listen to the music. Like, it sounds just like 
um those old drill box that you would spin the little thing around and then it's like you would see the man and the woman dancing it so you know this was right in the dining room area close to the to the ballroom so i guess this was their music and they would have ballroom or quadrant or whatever they would have back in the day or maybe just entertainment just to listen to but this was one of the many musical instruments that they have in the house from way back when and the majority of them actually still work and these were the different discs i don't think this is this current word but i'm going with disc that they had so they could change whatever music they wanted to listen to at the time they also had a harp which was right in the ballroom so you can just picture it you know a nice elegant dinner a nice elegant ballroom festival festivity and somebody's playing the harp and everybody's dancing and having the time of their lives yeah they even had this instrument where it included a lot of winding uh, it reminds me of an organ at a church if that's the correct term oh this is not an instrument but it was a chinese chinese bowl with a dragon that's a punch bowl i think that's where the 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 juice would come through they had this piano right now this piano is danish in origin and they were telling us that the people from denmark i believe even wanted to purchase it and this was made by a famous piano maker Von back Brock in the day by something the like that of. and he was the only piano maker i guess back in the 1800s that could make a piano that was satisfactory for the famous beethoven but guys look at the intricacy of the piano and how it's well polished and this is from the 1800s like carpentry back then like they were well skilled um persons and i believe they were more than likely to be highly valuable because i mean this piece is very very neat very very neat another musical instrument this one i believe you could could you could put a penny in and there were like different numbers you could select for different music that you want but they don't sell the pennies that they would put in it anymore so she would have to open it and then let it let it play she said that the song that was playing on this was busy busy some 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 but yeah i never heard it I never heard it at all. So this is the last thing I'm going to show you guys before I move on to the other great house. This is the last will and testament of Thomas Birchell. He was the one that Birchell Baptist was named after. Now he and William Nib were very important in the history of in terms of the rebellion because they allowed um, slaves like Samuel Sharp to meet up and allow other slaves to go to church which was a major part of them coming together and forming a strategy to rebel i'm gonna go straight into the rampton great house right now as i talk more about the rebellion this right here is a drawing showing Rampton great house and its slave village back in 1825 now this is what Rampton Great House looked like. This was from last year when I did the video, but this is the second Great House. The first one was burnt down in the Christmas Day Rebellion or the Baptist War, which was the largest slave rebellion in British Caribbean. It was led by our most honorable Samuel Sharp and it lasted 11 days and roughly 60,000 slaves were killed. So this is a drawing again of the destruction of the Rampton Great House in 1832. And this, yeah, this is the same drawing. You saw what you looked before. Now, what started out as a passive resistance by refusing to work on Christmas Day and demanding more free time and work wages eventually led into a rebellion on Monday, the 27th of December, which started with setting the Kensington State on fire and so all the other plantations followed suit. Now, prior to this, the abolition of slavery was being debated in the British Parliament but was deliberately being delayed. However, because of all the persuasion, they abolished slave trade in 1807, right? Now, as we all know, Daddy Sharp was a deacon and so he had some amount of freedom to travel the island, especially on traditional holidays for religious services, which is why Birchall Baptist is so important, like I mentioned earlier. And he used this opportunity to plan and discuss the revolt and rally individuals. Christmas was the perfect day because most of the plantation owners were away for the holiday. 
During the rebellion, 14 whites were killed and over 200 slaves were killed. The retribution continued and close to 300 slaves were tried and hanged, including most honorable Samuel Sharp. And he was hanged on May 23rd in 1832 in what is now known as Sam Sharp Square. And before that, it was called Charles Square. P.S. Considering that he was, you know, hanged on May 23rd, they probably should have named um, Labor Day Sam Sharp Day, but that's just a thought. And this is it. This is Sam Sharp Square, once known as Charles Square, right in downtown Montego Bay. He once said, I would rather die upon yonder gallows than live in slavery. I don't know what yonder gallows is, but it sounds very poetic, right? And he was made a national hero on March 31st, 1982. If you check the $50 bill, you see him, right? Now, after the rebellion in 1831, which ended in January 1832, um, there was a lot of profit loss due to prom property damage and there was increased military loss. So the parliament responded by passing the Abolition Act of Slavery in 1834. So that's, that was still all of two years after the rebellion that they finally passed the Abolition Act of Slavery. Now, the Emancipation Celebration were short-lived because Following that, they in introduced what was called the apprentice system, which was pretty much people would work regular hours, 45 hours a week, right? And they were paid, so they would work 45 hours on wage and they were paid for any hours that they worked in addition. So that's like me working my regular work week and then I only get paid for additional hours, which was still like slavery, just the same, right? No. They wanted the apprenticeship to last for up until 1840, but after a while they had to abolish that as well, and they did that in 1838. And after the emancipation, right, the slave masters were given compensation for the quote-unquote loss of property, right? So that the slaves that they lost, or the apprentice people that they lost, they were compensated, and the British did not finish paying off the slave master until 2015 as in 2015 were just gone then never that was when they finally finished paying them off and it was roughly 17 billion pounds in today's money right because the slave masters thought that they had lost their property so they had to be compensated by the government because they wanted to abolish abolish slavery and this right here one of the guy that was there he saw I was on the tombstone for one of the old slave masters. It says, sacred to the memory of Malcolm Beveridge, who departed this and on 19th of December, 1799, at the age of 44. But the guy was saying that his body is not there, but the stone is, you know, this has been there for a very long time. Now, another estate is Mount Pelia Estate, which is close to Rampton, but this is an old picture of what it looks like but i was unable to find any remnants um at the time i went it was raining this is actually the church that they directed me to they were saying that they thought this church was where i was talking but this isn't it but obviously this is an old church because it's dated 1847 um but yeah that's pretty much all the great houses in saint james right I think there's one up by cinnamon hill that i never went to but if you guys know any more you know you can dm me on instagram and also stay tuned because i'm going to be talking about doctor's cave as well as harmony beach park in the next vlog and as always thank you guys for watching if you made it this far a special thank you to you guys i truly appreciate it